Welcome everyone to a castle game for Age of Empires 4. And today, Spawning Southwest Corner about playing in blue, we've got Valdemar playing as the Byzantines. And his opponent in the northeast playing in red, we've got a Bassard OP. Who possibly could be a beastie apparently in chat. He's playing as the Opids. There we go. We've got two people independently saying this is beastie. Fantastic matchup. Valdemar versus Beastie on Coastal Cliffs. Excited for this one. That is for sure. And I like Coastal Cliffs because it's kind of a bit different. Like it, it gives you Arabia vibes, but obviously a bit more narrow. It does mean cavalry play is a little bit more, you know, a bit more restricted depending on the map generation. You've got less angles to attack with. And the Byzantines and the Ibids, two really good civilizations in most maps. But this one in particular, I feel like could be pretty strong. The Byzantines, if they can get going with their economy and you know, get the water level up with the cisterns, can pack a punch. They've got the 10% extra gather rate to start the game off, which is actually a really nice power spike. Like, I don't want to say spike, but it's, it's something that they start off with. It's really, really beneficial. Gets the economy rocking and rolling, and the Ibids do get something similar with the House of Wisdom, but it takes 10 structures to get there. You'll need 10 structures together, connected up together, to get the same 10% gather rate. Now, with these two civilizations, Oh, let's start off with the Byzantines. I think they've gone through a couple of changes recently. With this little bit of a rework actually on the cistern, now getting a 10% extra gather rate on the villagers used to be, I believe, 5% before the most recent patch. It's been a big, it's been a big changer actually. The uh, the feudal age aggression for the Byzantines has been something that's you know, been apparent actually. Most recent, uh, most recent games, most recent patches. It's something they do quite well because extended feudal age in certain matchups, depending on which one it is. The extra 10%, if it feeds its way through in the feudal age, just a nice uh, bit of a boost in the economy. Gives you a little bit of an edge. Of course, the Abbasid, or the, the Ayubids rather, a variant civilization of the Abbasids, can bridge that once they do get the tier 1 on the House of Wisdom. Takes a bit of time to get there, though. Something else is actually really nice is if you do end up having extended feudal age into Olive Grove Transitions, I mean, it has to be a very extended feudal age if you're going to do that. They get the Grand Winery extra 60% olive oil, get the mercenaries out really nicely. A bit of a a unit number spike with that. You've got a couple of options, you know, you could go for the Western Mercenary Contract. Longbows could be a nice option. I think Keshik's a bit of a tricky one because, of course, in this matchup, the Ayubids, they get Desert Raiders, they get Camel Lancers. They get Camel Unnees is what I'm talking about. Camel Unnees will, you know, reduce the amount of damage coming in from Cavalry by 20%. So Keshik's, you know, they've got the mobility. This map already doesn't really lend itself to mobility. And then also 20% damage reduction... I'm not so sure about that particular contract. I feel like maybe Longbowman and Limitane could be a good option for the Byzantines to deal with what the Ayubids have to throw at them. Speaking of which, it is going to be the military wing for the Ayubids, a very commonly chosen wing to go up to the next stage with. Gives you the Desert Raiders, gives you a bit of breathing space to cause a bit of harassment if you can, but also allow the Ayubids to do a couple of things. They can maybe go for a cheeky fast castle, which actually possibly seems to be the case. Four villages on gold... It's a decent number. Sometimes we see five, but it's going for four at the moment. It could be a castle age out of this, but uh, second town center is always an option too. Not always the case that's chosen, but I think actually the interesting thing about Ayubids is that a second town center for them, if it, what, can I just say, well, that's a lot of sheep. Holy moly. Uh, yeah, a second town center for the Ayubids tends not to actually come in the feudal age. Interesting enough, they tend to, you know, get, as we see here, military wing and get a castle age presence, maybe get some of those relics and then think about getting a, a, another town center. Once they've stabilized. I think the great thing about the Ayubids at the moment, they're one of these civilizations that can be aggressive, they can be putting pressure on the map. And at some point, somehow in the castle age, they can just really transition nicely to a second town center, sometimes without their opponent even noticing. And uh again, scaling the economy with military presence is such a nice smooth way to do it. We shall see if Beastie is able to do that today. The Byzantines, on the other hand, by the time they do get to the castle, generally on that time in the game, they've got a couple of systems already rocking and rolling and they do have the water level increased. So it's not necessarily a power spike that comes with the castle age, but it's more about power spike that comes with the timing of a castle age. The similar sort of timing, you know, the water levels is so nice for the systems and the, the economy and the way it works for the Byzantines, because not only are they boosting the economy, but they also produce the uh, miniature units faster. So it goes hand in hand. They couple the economy with the military production with the conscriptio so you've got the obviously increased gather rate of villages but then conscriptio means that production speeds are increased as well there's that desert raider causing a bit of havoc 
with the ranged attack toggled and it's not necessarily going to kill a villager unless there's any bit of miss micro there from Valdemar but he's pushing the villagers away from gold as I say that he's running a bit of a tightrope on that putting the villagers a weak ones away and it's causing idle time more than anything and behind this it allows uh, Beastie to breathe it's actually going to add it in a stable we're commonly seeing that being done so possibly giving give an extra bit of feudal age aggression and forcing a barracks out of the IU of uh, the Byzantines rather Adding an archery range as well, so it's going to be actually feudal age aggression behind this. Looks like the extra four villages and gold is for mostly for upgrades. We shall see. Can I harass that woodline? The woodline is actually relatively exposed, by the way. It's not that close to the town centre as you'd expect. Uh, if it was here, maybe a bit more protected, but a bit more of a wider arc than that. Mercenary house. Has been built. It's actually going for javelin throws. So limitane javelin throws could be a really strong armor composition against the Ayubids. Adding another secondary arch range. So yeah, definitely feel age pressure coming out for Beastie. Constantly harassing villagers. So Valdemar will have to pay uh, close attention to this. Just to make sure he doesn't lose any villagers. Now mercenaries pop out, pushes the desert raiders back, of course. And villagers going up north to the berries, which actually, incidentally, will be spotted by Valdemar. So, yeah, I, I, he must have noticed that, by the way, because I think he just redirected his scout. So he must have been looking at it, most likely. And he's going to send his cavalry there, possibly, later on the game, if he does get there. If he does get any cavalry, that's the question. Because mostly infantry at the moment. Getting an outpost for that extra protection. Understandable, it's obviously exposed and kind of right out of the way. Now, water level 2 does mean a 14% gather rate boosting. And so even with tier 1 of the Golden Age is 4% uh, behind in, in effect. And bear in mind, a couple of free units from the Olive Oil does mean the Byzantines, you know, they get, they get a decent amount of units. Nice and early, they didn't necessarily have to you know, super pay for. Olive Oil was a... Uh, a nice mechanic, getting food from the berries, but also olive oil. He does have the shield wall ability activatable possibility there if he wants to. Doesn't need to at this point. Walling up on the east side. Going to give him some protection on the gold if he so needs to head in that location to get gold. Cavalry, though, for the, for the basses does force the Byzantines to stay at home, right? It's always a tricky situation before... Uh, the Byzantines have to secure his, his base before he can really head out because of the cavalry. It does allow the Bassets, oh, sorry, I keep saying Bassets, but the Ayubids, that measure of security, it looks like maybe opting to the castle age now. With this number of villages in gold, it's got to be. He feels quite confident and happy that he's keeping the Byzantines at home. That's the main thing. Getting steeled arrow for the archers too. That was actually quite nice for the ba the. Do you know what I keep saying Abbasids? It's because his name's Abbasid OP, confusing the heck out of me. But yeah, the nice thing about the Obids, similar to the Abbasids as it happens, is that when they do tech up, um, he he'll be able to get Manchnik on the ground, build them quite quickly. It forces the Byzantines to react to it to try and deal with it. Maybe look to get Springle or two, and and that kind of uh, nuance to the civilization is quite nice because it means that the temp progression is certainly with the Obids allows them to dictate the terms of engagement forces the Byzantines to react at all times. Gives them the front foot as it happens. Villagers back away, good reactions. Might lose a villager though. Yep, the ranged attack from the Desert Raiders working out in his favour there. Should get rid of the Limitane in the north. Uh, looks like sending a couple of units in Limitane heading that to raid. Yeah, of course, machining chat is confusing. Abbasid Oplee. I say Abbasid, it should be a Bassid. That's, uh, well, that's how I pronounce it. Anyway, the Bassid's OP being the name, but the Ayubids actually being the Civ being played. Villagers actually will be able to garrison most of them inside the outpost. But this could be torched down, actually. The Limitani and the Javan Throwers should be okay to take that down pretty quickly. So that should be four dead villagers, although the Ayubids are heading that direction, slowly but surely. There is that tech up though to the castle age with growth. It's such a such a nice way to get to the next stage. A power spike of an extra eight villagers. 
It's actually massive. Yeah, we do also get a little bit of uh, extra bit of food in the berry bushes, which will be taken down. So nice sniping of those. He will lose five villages in total. But he'll get eight once he does get to the next stage. Prepping for camel lancers. Double stable. Something that's actually quite nice as well for the cast stage coming in for the the IU bids is that if he does get dervishes out nice and early, all the relics are pretty quite close to each other, right? So it doesn't take a lot of time just to pick them all up. With a good number of military units here, Valdemar, if he keeps an eye on them, it could be hard to challenge because it's mostly Limitane and most of the horsemen out for the IU bids. It's difficult to challenge. I gotta say that the Ayub is gonna to get to the next stage with a plenty of banking up of food and gold. The Byzantines, they are well, well, way away from the cast stage, but what he does have is a pretty decent olive grove transition. It's quite early, and he's not really necessarily doing it for the food in and of itself, but he's getting olive oil too, right? So he's pumping out military. He's, uh, you know, got 12 javelin throws, all courtesy of the Olive oil, completely free, of course. There's that castle age timing, and now Valdemar has a couple of options. He can look to try and put some aggression, put some pressure on the map. Or he could think about staying at home with his standing army, try and buy some time to get to the castle age himself. It feels like the former could be a good option because he does have a good village, uh, military number lead. The only trouble is, is um, I, I think it's fine actually, if he, because he's going up against camel lancers, and don't forget the Limitane, they can still trade well against them. Sure, it's Feudal Age versus Castle Age, but it's still relatively a good count. It is technically a counter unit line, right? It's a different picture if it was Gulam. If it's Gulam, it's a totally different picture, and maybe then Valdemar would be forced back, but I don't think Valdemar really has to head home at all. You can try and do some damage with these units, especially with uh, how tanky are, and should be able to snipe a village or two. Oh, but as I say that, the Manchnik does deploy. That is a problem. They do have to back away. Yeah, sure, Man in Tums is, or Gulam in this scenario is a problem, but so is the Manchnik. We did take, talk about it earlier on the cast. This little uh, power spike in that capability is, is massive. And so now, yeah, Valdemar kind of forced back because of that. He's going to try and, you know, stay on the map there for as long as he possibly can. Got to be careful, but he needs to buy time to get to the next stage. And then one of the best ways to do it is, uh, well, there's two ways, really. Have a good standing army is number one. And number two, static defenses. And he's prepping for that as we speak. Now, what's level at 3? That's going to be a nice boost. 18% village gather rate, but more importantly, when it gets to the castle, well, even now, actually, 60% production speed. Goes hand in hand. And it will be the Golden Horn Tower. No real surprises there. We'll get a couple of free units every so often. That's a lot of Limitane. So something that's actually kind of interesting to talk about, or not on this patch, but on the last patch when they started off with only 5% gather rate, the um, the Byzantines. So Limitane in themselves are really strong as a unit. Like, the, the shield wall ability is super nice, but the reason why they weren't necessarily totally OP with the hands of the Byzantines was because of the... Uh, we'll come to that in a second, because that age up is actually being denied pretty heavily, although the Limitane pushed that back, of course. Yeah, just to complete that thought, you know, the Limitane are a really strong unit, but they're expensive and the economy wasn't super strong for the Byzantines, so it meant you couldn't really mass them up. But that's all that's all changed. Like, the economy is actually really decent now for the Byzantines, so, so now you can mass them up. And it, it poses a problem. As you can see, the Ayub is struggling with it. But it's being pushed away from Barriers slightly. I tell you what, won't struggle against the Limitani necessarily, is that Manjanek. If you can get a couple of shots off there with that, it'd be pretty hefty. He's going to get the veterancy upgrade on the Limitani. Double mask, yeah. He's going to go for the relics now. He's got the map control positioning. This is the timing he wants that. He wants to mop up all those relics, juicy relics. If he can get done out the Byzantines, could be huge. Could see some huge fights here, actually. The Limitani engaging with the... Camels, if they can, can't get close enough just yet. The gap closing does use the shield wall ability. Mangan deploys. Be 
you can't get on top of the mangan. I mean, he's losing a lot of camels here, Beastie. Oh god, he ripped through the Limitani. I'm not so I'm not so sure about this fight. I'm not so sure why he's taking it. In a blink of an eye, Beastie's gonna lose the Ma the Manginic as well. This is the powerhouse of Limitani. It, it didn't really feel like he had to do that. But Beastie loses his camels and he should be able to pick these uh retreating Limitani, even with the shield ball ability, so. I mean, he's still got map positioning, but he traded a lot for it. He traded a lot for it. Now, if he can get most of these relics, it's probably okay, but... He's still swarming, to be fair, with the units. But uh, I guess I guess the camel enjoy I me mean, always gets a little bit hurt when you see camels dying. Wait a minute, what is... Hello? Well, it's been a while, but you'd love to see it. Tower of the Sultan. It could do some serious damage, by the way. 600 siege damage plus an extra two vessels of wool. 200, rather. Yeah, it's it's pretty hefty. It does attack as well, and 7... 20, sorry, 20 garrison spots. It's a decent amount. <laughs> I'm glad we picked this one to cast. He's also going to get another Manjanik, so Siege Warfare is on the cards. Oh my god, is he going to sneak this one? Ah, oh, it doesn't look like it. Valdemar should get there. It's a bit of a race, but Valdemar should just about get there. Only just. Oh, it's a slow unit, but when you do garrison inside... Yep, people on Twitch chat mentioning it as well. Speed increases. Wait, imagine it deploys the, the crazy incendiary or kinetic option. No, it's an incendiary one. Definitely good to see. Those villagers on the wood line pretty exposed. Some good shots could be damaging. Does get on top of the uh, javelin throws a little bit. Is so Valdemar trying to buy his time a little bit just to try and mass up to take one big fight? But the trouble for him is a lot of production of the front line being uh, taken down pretty quickly. Beastie, if he take this, uh, takes this down, then production is going to be halted a little bit, rebuilding at the back. And Actually, one thing to consider, actually, by the way, about Siege, is we talked about the counter being sprinkled. Actually, there's one little thing the Byzantines have up their sleeve, and it is the Cataphract. Uh, interesting enough, has a trample ability, which, if it can trample on top of the Siege, can do a lot of damage and, and, and you know, take it out, of course. Oof, getting on top of the javelin throws and... Doing significant damage. Valdemar is under pressure. He needs to find a way to push all this back. I mean, this is looking a bit disastrous for him. Can he hold this? It's got all two sacred sites. It's got four of the five relics as well. Here come the cataphracts. They should be able to dive and trample on the magic. Magic does deploy though. Gets good damage on the farmers mostly though. Tower of the Sultan. Blocking our vision, really. So the Manchinik have all been taken down. Tower of the Sultan back and away. Now, the good thing is Varinga Guards. That's a heavy hitting unit in this regard. Like, those archer numbers, they're looking good. But if the Varinga Guards get on top of that, they could be devastating. Camels all taken care of. And Tower of the Sultan have to back away. It's good timing here for Valdor. Pushing it back in a big way. Beastie. His push is over. That Tower of the Sultan won't survive too much longer. It does get taken apart. And... Valdemar can reset again. Whilst Abbasids, the Ibids rather. And this is what we're talking about early in the cast. This is it. This is weird how they can have the aggression and also tech into you know, a second town center. I'll have to say though, you know, he had a good map control for quite some time. That was kind of surrendered a little bit. Now the pushback from the Byzantines now I mean that map control is not really in the hands of the, the Ibids any longer. But yeah, second town center added in. It's built up and he's already got a village elite, so that's going to escalate even further. Now, the big part of the village elite has been the growth wing upgrade, obviously eight extra villages. But the economy with, is, is, it should be good here for the Ibids, I've got to say, because he's up to tier three in the Golden Age, so production speed is going to be increased, but also he's got the 10% gather rate baseline for the villagers. But four relics, two sacred sites. The water level's only at water level two. It has to rebuild that. Back up to three again. Having to rebuild uh, the structures as well, so Beasties bought a bit of time, of course. Now let's talk about army composition, right? So mostly ranged units and Campbell Lancers. There's added in a couple of crossbows actually. It's quite mixed. 
could be tricky for Valdemar to deal with. I think Varingan Guard Limitana could do decent. Um, and then if you can try and get on top of the Manganels, or Manganik, I should say, then it could be okay. But if, as long as only one or two Manganik, you should be able to deal with it. Limitane, Varingan Guards could be strong. Sprinkle in a couple of javelin throws as well, of course, from the mercenaries. You see, uh, prioritizing the upgrades, and Valdemar will need to think about pushing out soon. Timer is ticking from the sacred sites. But he's biding his time, waiting for the opportune minute moment to move out. 18% on the village gathering right now with that third water level. Military Academy coming for the Ayubid, so replenishment of the army will come in quick time because of that. Two Manjanek now. It's starting to become a bit of a scary... Whoa, that is a crazy mining camp for the stone. That's perfect. That's got to be the thumbnail, maybe. We'll have to see if we can come up with a better idea for thumbnails for this game. He's moving out now, though, Valdemar, with a heavy-hitting army. Varingan guards, and I've got to say with the Manchnik, there are two of them. The Varingan guards, they can, you know, they can soak up a bit of damage and gap close. The Berserking ability. They can get on top of it. Oh, he's going to need to try and peel off. He's just peel off three Varingan guards. Getting on top of the Manchnik. Should be able to take out one. There's a bit of an oversight there for Beasty. Keeping them unprotected. That's actually massive. Losing two Manchnik very cheaply. Varingan guards tanking that front line for the Byzantines. He might just win this fight. Javan throws in the back line, focusing on the archers. This is looking a wrap. I mean, the Byzantines are right on top of this. Ringing guards getting absolutely so much value. Archers super exposed. No meat shield. No front line remaining. A couple of camper lancers trying to take out as many of the jammer throws as possible. Trying to throw down the keeper. I don't think that will go up. There's no way. He's got no military to defend this. Jam throws and Ringing guards. Both the hard counters to those archers. And yeah, camel lancers aren't doing all as much damage as he would have wanted. And that keep will not go up. He's going to lose a lot of villages trying to get it up if he tries to. He might have to delete that. Actually, to be fair, the keep might just go up. But even if it does, he's going to lose a lot of villagers doing so. Well, he's got a lot of villagers anyway. He does have a second town center. No, he, he doesn't go up. He doesn't commit to it in the end. Can I say the villagers are going to have to delete that, that keep, I suspect. Trying to get the reinforcements in. He's going to, wait, he's going to try and commit now? He's going to try and commit. I mean, I think it could go up, but it's going to be a tight way. It will go up, but he's going to lose a lot of villagers doing so. But I think he had to. He had to try and stabilize that position. But perfect timing for Valdemar to move on out. And he's killed so many of those villagers. Valdemar doesn't need to push any further. Needs to back away and maybe get some siege. But he does need to deactivate a sacred site. He's getting uh, five minutes on the timer. Now he uh, did have textiles, by the way. So Beastie's villagers did survive a little bit longer. Without textiles, I'm pretty certain that keep would not have gone up. It's a good thing he had that upgrade. It would have been a totally different picture otherwise. You know, it's going to look to deactivate the sacred site now. And uh, this is where gold becomes an issue. Like, this gold's expiring. So Beastie's going to have to, you know, get to the back gold unless he goes for the neutral ones. But in terms of neutral gold veins, there's only actually two of gold veins of 4,000 gold. And so gold is sparse on this map. And this is where Byzantines come online a little bit because, you know, the fact that they do have olive oil as a means to produce mercenaries, but also siege if they get there in the Imperial Age. With the foreign engineering company he may not choose that landmark but it's quite likely he will and but the one thing to consider for the ayubids which is perfect them they do have four relics which is you know a nice bit of a boost if he does get to the imperial age tithe barns could come into play as well uh, something to consider as well trade it's an interesting one this map like it, it i like the trade route the way the post is because it means that trade isn't sort of uh, one of those things that you just hang your hat on in this map because the trade post is right slap bang in the middle between the two players so it's not it's definitely not safe that's for sure not unless you protect it yourself. Yep, taking the stone now. He's mopping it up and static defenses. I mean, at this point, Valdemar just ignores it. He's going to look to do some critical damage. I mean, ultimately, in that fight that he took, you know, he, had to, he, had, he tried so much to get the keep up. And he had to commit the beastie to a suboptimal fight. And now that could burn him a little bit because that's a lot of army from the Byzantines. Actually playing really safely though. Valdemar not wanting to push just yet. 
I'm he's gonna have to die at some point because if he does allow the Ayubid's economy to rock and roll for the next 15 20 minutes actually that villager lead will start to you know be a bit of an issue villagers retreating that's a lot of villagers idle by the way that's 34 villagers a third of the economy he's going for the gold I mean, if Valdemar spots that, that's a problem. Is he going to get the sacred site himself? All right, it looks like Valdemar is actually waiting for siege. Bear in mind, like he did have his army here, could have pushed in, but then he would have been without siege. And often siege is what you need to take out infrastructure. He's actually going to go for the keep in the middle now and try and deny that. I mean, I'm surprised he actually went round it. I'm, I'm surprised he's not just ignoring it. Like, keep... I don't think that keep actually does that much, the beastie. I mean, sure, the map is narrow, but there is a way around it. Either way, Valdemar going to take that out. Keep trying to go around the wood line. Doesn't quite manage it. Wait, did he lose a... Did he lose a... Did he lose a stone for that? It looked like he lost a stone for that. Like, he afforded the keep, and then now he doesn't have the stone in the bank for it anymore. Well, that's devastating. I mean, he must have, right? I'm not so sure what did it. Did he have units? That's strange. Maybe he sold the, the stone in the end. He didn't quite spot that. Either way, two trebuchets. Can we work on that? Keep in the middle. It's pretty much almost down. Oh my god, this is... Yeah, I mean, we talked about how this is devastating. Like, there's so many villagers that are super exposed and Valdemar taking the most of that. Sure, he's got plenty of villagers to spare, but you tend not to want to lose those villagers, ideally. He has mopped up a thousand gold with it, though. And he has to send a couple of camel riders for it. And the Ayubid's going to deal with that with his own army. But most of his armies in the north does have a keep back home. I think he... Yeah, so maybe he didn't, he didn't lose it. I think he deleted it and then he placed the keep back home here instead. He decided, no, let's not be crazy. Let's get a bit more defensive. Yeah, that must have been what happened. Could deactivate the sacred site on the west side. All of a sudden, the pendulum has swung. The Byzantines actually looking a bit more stronger, and things are heading in their position a little bit, in their direction. With a massive army. The Ayubids, and this could be a really good timing. Like, the Ayubids have got great economy, but they haven't had time to really pump out military units with it. So this could turn into a problem real quick. Gonna take down the mosque. Oh, Magic deploy. There are three of them actually. That's gonna be difficult to deal with. Does have a couple of springles. He's gonna have to take a really good engagement here with those if he can. Does have two springles of his own here, Beastie. So he should be okay to defend for now. But the big thing is the trebuchets actually, because in the meantime the trebuchets will work. It's turning into a bit of a siege fight, right? So whoever's more springles probably gonna win this. And the good thing for Valdemar has got plenty of infantry and military units to try and back up if uh, a big push does come out for the Ayubis to push this back. That keep will have to be repaired. Does he have enough stone to do so? I don't think so, no. Only 86 in the bank, so if he's going to get more stone, he's going to have to, he's going to, have to purchase it from the market. Which is not going to be a good trade. You can see trying to get as many Springles as he can for a decisive fight takes out the mosque. So, going to free up one relic. Oh, he snipes out a uh, Springle being built. Once people does go for the Byzantines, though, and another for the Ayubids. But three Mangonels deploying, that could be problematic. The Magic might actually just deploy on the Springles. We've seen it time and time again. Or loses one. About to potentially lose a second. It does about to engage. I mean, I think at this point, the Ringing Guards in good numbers. He might just fight this. There's a good number of crossbows, though, for the Ayubids. So if he can't get on top of that, crossbows will get good value. And what if he tries to snag that relic in the end? But two Mangonels coming out for the, the Byzantines now. That could be huge, actually. If you can get on top of the crossbow numbers, that could be massive, massive shot on this crossbow. This is a lot of HP. But he needs to take more than just HP. He needs to do some significant damage. Villages are repairing, so he must have, must have purchased some stone, which is huge, actually. I think Villages might try and torch down the, the trebuchets. But if the Maginic or the Maginals do spot that, they could go on top of that. I'm trying to head to the west side to come in from that angle. But yeah, trebuchets are spotted. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, God. That's, 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 that's not good. Those villages gonna crumble before getting any, anywhere near. Would he get one or two torches? Maybe two torches, but that's it. Loses a lot of villages and 
Unfortunately, the torches are still ablaze. Valdemar, though, with two trebuchets, taking out key infrastructure is so difficult to take out the trade, uh, the the trebuchets with the range that they have. Constantly doing damage, and yeah, BC is still trying to build up the number of springholds, but it's going to take one needs to take one big decisive fight. The big thing as well, the damage output, whilst he didn't lose the keep, it forced out the repairs, forced Beastie to spend the stone that he didn't actually have, had to buy it from the market. Bear in mind the Aibas actually only have two landmarks, so it could go for a landmark snipe. It does have the Sacred Star timer behind this as well, so Valdemar looking in a really good spot. He's got to spot the two Manjanik if he can, bring a Gaza back in a way, does eat a couple of shots. Not sure if that outpost goes up in the end, it doesn't for Valdemar. Good, good man, Janik shots. Does lose one of them though. A decent number of Springles are coming out for Beastie. He's about to engage us a lot of Springles. Does lose a couple of the siege engines on the back line, but look at the Varangian Guards. They're getting top of the siege. Lose a lot of the Springles from the Varangian Guards. That's massive. The Varangian Guards tanking heavily. Crossbow numbers looking really solid though. Crossbow siege, really the options for the Ayubids. But he does lose the siege. And that allows the Manganels for the Byzantines to push away the crossbows potentially. He's He's pushing through with the Ringing Guards, but not many remain. Manganel's deployed, but again, in the meantime, it's the trebuchets that are doing huge amounts of damage. If he keeps the trebuchets alive, that's massive. And if you get the outpost as well, you get Manganel placements inside. That'll be hard to push back, because he doesn't really have the eco... doesn't have the gold to get any uh, anti-siege at this point. And in fact, it uh, looks like Valdemar, look how many... He's just pumping out units now. Water level 5. That's going to be 26% gather rate. But also 100% extra production speed on his buildings. Three mangonels, handful of springholds, and two trebuchets. He's going to just torch things down with the melee units he has. This is looking rough for Beastie. Got massive fam farming transition. He can only afford you know, food and wood units, really, at this point. But the timing is up against him. I mean, even if he does push this back somehow, he then has to take the sacred sites. Or at least decap them. House of Wisdom burning to the ground. There she goes. Next, I suspect, will be the capital town. So they might just go for the fight. Oh, that's that's a great lot of mangonels. Three of them. But just coming out to try and torch down the siege, possibly. But again, he's taking heavy losses. Range units being decimated by the mangonels. And look at the bringing guards. Going to block off the villagers route to them. Oh, Valdemar sending his own villagers as well. I mean, if he can get rid of the villagers, that's the ideal because he doesn't want to lose too many Mangales. Mangales get massive shot on the back line and he's sending spearmen, sending crossbows, but I'm not sure it's enough. I'd keep going forward there for Valdemar. That is a get out of my game keep if I ever seen one. And yeah, I don't think there's any way to stop that. There's another keep of his own, but at the back there, Beastie. But I'm not sure it's going to be enough riding in with horsemen to go on the Springles if he can. But I think he straight up loses his fight. And I think Valdemar... Should be winning this game. There it is, Landon. And Beastie taps up. Valdemar comes in with the victory with the Byzantines over the Ayub. It's a great game of Age of Empires 4. Hope you guys enjoyed it on YouTube. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care and see you next time.